So it's been a couple of months since Terraria 1.4.4 and you might be getting the urge to replay the game again. With 1.4.5 still on the horizon, what do you do? Well, if you haven't already, I think it's time to check out modded Terraria. Now modding a game can seem a little scary to some, but with Terraria it's actually very simple. The simplest way is to own Terraria on Steam, then download Tmod Loader completely for free, and check out the Steam Workshop and just see what mods catch your eye. Now picking the right mods, that could be a little tricky, so today I'm going to be letting you know my essential mod recommendations, and I'll also give you a little review of some of the larger mods that if you're going to play modded Terraria, you have to check out. Let's begin with the smaller mods then, and these are mods that I recommend you take with you if you play a larger content mod. Now, there's going to be a little bit of personal preference here, so have a little listen to each mod, and if it sounds like your thing, go ahead and check it out. But if it isn't for you, it doesn't matter if you skip them. Now, first up, and this is a very easy recommendation, this one is called Recipe Browser, and it allows you to assign a hotkey, which pulls up a recipe browser. What's great about this is you can place any material in the box and it will show you every item that's possible to craft with that, whether that be in vanilla or the larger content mod that you're playing. You can then dive into each recipe and see each item individually. And if you click on a different ingredient, it will even show you where that ingredient comes from. Next up, we have boss checklist. Now, this allows you to pull up a list with every single boss in vanilla Terraria and maybe a larger mod that you're playing. And it's great because it allows you to see which boss you fought and which boss you haven't. If you click on a boss's name, it will show you which item you need to summon that boss. And it also comes with a very handy book, which will tell you all about the bosses that you're facing and all of the items that they're dropping. And if you're playing a mod that you've never played before, this is essential because it will point you in the right direction. If you're ever stuck, you know which way you need to be heading. So this next one, Magic Storage, well, it might just change your life. Organizing every item in Terraria can be a little tiring, but when you're playing vanilla Terraria, I would say it's not too bad. But once you start playing modded Terraria and you introduce thousands of new items into the game, keeping track of all of that, it's a nightmare. So Magic Storage is here to save the day. The mod gives you one central hub to dump all of your items inside, and if you ever need an item, you can simply search it up and pull it out of the storage. Not only that, there's extensions as well, so you can add a crafting interface where you can dump all of your crafting stations, and it'll show you every single recipe that you can currently craft, or ones that you can't even craft yet. There's also an NPC in the mod, which acts as a tutorial, so if you need help setting up Magic Storage, well, speak to the NPC and it guides you along the way. This next one is personal preference, but I find it super useful when I'm playing a larger content mod and I've got other things to think about, and it's called Alchemist NPC Lite. This mod adds NPCs which will sell you all the herbs that you need, some crafting materials which you might not be bothered to farm, and also any potion that you want. Now this of course takes the value of fishing and herb collecting out of the game, but I would say if you're playing a larger content mod, one that's especially hard, this is a pretty useful mod. And I recommend the light version specifically because it will only add those NPCs and nothing else. Next up, and this one is also personal preference, or Excavator. This will give you superhuman mining speed, which doesn't break the game by allowing you to mine ores that you previously couldn't. All it does is it just speeds up the mining process. And just like Alchemist NPC Lite, when I'm playing a larger content mod, I want things to be a little speedier so that I can focus on the mod itself. And or Excavator, it just makes mining quicker. Now this next one, I've become so used to that I was playing vanilla Terraria this week and kind of forgot it wasn't part of the base game and it's called boss cursor this mod gives you a little cursor around your player which will point in the direction that the boss is currently at which i know sounds super simple but it's really useful especially when you're facing plantera and you're waiting for her to summon off screen it will point you in the direction that she is so you can already start evading some of her attacks before you make it to your big arena when you're playing some of the larger content mods bosses are going to be flying all over the place they're going to be off screen maybe they're not and boss cursor makes it a lot easier to track them this next one is another personal preference one that I only really use with some mods, but a lot of people swear by it, and it's called Fargo's Mutant Mod. There are other mods surrounding this, but Fargo's Mutant Mod itself is a convenience mod, and it adds in five new NPCs that will sell you various things. For example, there's a lumberjack that will sell you all different types of wood so you don't have to worry about cutting down trees. The Deviant will sell you summons for various rare enemies and mini-bosses that you've already encountered. The Abomination will sell various 
various event summons. The mutant will sell various boss summons. And there's also a squirrel with a top hat which will sell you enchantments and souls. Now a big reason to play modded Terraria is to enjoy the beautiful soundtracks that the community have made, which leads us perfectly into the sponsor of today's video. Raycon represents premium audio at the perfect price. Recently, it's been nice weather here and I've been going on a lot more morning walks and the perfect partner for that is the Everyday Earbud. And if you're like me, you need music to keep you going and keep you motivated, Raycon can actually be a great way to help build new habits without breaking the bank, which has been great for me because they're a joy to listen to. And it doesn't stop there because whether you're looking for low latency gaming headphones or a speaker with a battery that'll last you through the night, Raycon has you covered. And the best part is, because they cost half the price of other premium brands, well, you don't have to decide which one you want. You can get both, or maybe just pick up a spare if you want to be really fancy. These everyday earbuds are premium and come with some great features. Like for example, an awareness mode, which is great for if you're out and about, free customizable sound profiles, which is amazing if you want to tailor them to the music that you like, and also custom gel tips to give you the perfect fit. I don't have magic ears, but these bad boys, they ain't leaving. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com slash chippy to save 15% on your Raycon order. That's buyraycon.com slash chippy and that'll save you 15%. Next up, and I don't recommend this for a regular playthrough, it's called Heroes Mod. This gives you all the tools you would ever need to kind of have your own creative mode in Terraria, and it's a lot different from Journey Mode. With this mod, you can summon in any item, summon in any enemy or boss, change the time of day, and just do whatever you want. Now, you should never use this during a playthrough because you'd ruin the fun of actually collecting the items that you want, but it is super useful if you ever run into any problem with a mod, because if you're not getting an item to pop up or a boss to summon, you can jump into Heroes Mod and just force it to work. But it's also a great tool to just mess around, and I feel like if you're going to play modded Terraria, you at some point have to check out the Heroes Mod. Now, at the time of filming, Team Mod Loader is currently version 1.4.3, so in the future, just disregard this one. It's called Omni Swing. We recently got the auto fire setting in 1.4.4, and I personally can't live without it now. So if you're playing an older version of Terraria, Omni Swing essentially gives you that feature. Next up, if you still want to do a little fishing, but you want it to be more convenient, well, I recommend the Angler Shop. This modifies the Angler NPC so that he now has a shop where you can buy any of the quest rewards without relying on RNG. There's also a setting which you can enable, which makes it a little more fair, where whenever you hand in a quest fish, you get a little bit of unique currency. You can then spend that currency on any of the quest rewards, so you're still earning them, but you're getting the one ones that you actually want. And since quest rewards were changed in 1.4.4, if you're playing 1.4.3, this makes it a little bit more in line with modern Terraria. And finally, for our smaller mods, which mod is this from? This mod is super simple. It will give you a little bit of extra text on an item and tell you exactly which mod is this from. And this is very useful if you're playing multiple larger content mods at the same time. It's also great if you haven't played too much Terraria because you might get an item and you go, hey, is this modded or is this actually in vanilla? This will help you keep track of that. So now let's talk about larger content mods. Now for each one of these, I recommend you check out a couple of the smaller mods that I've recommended and play each one of these larger mods individually. Now you can mash all of these mods together and you'll get a pretty unique experience, but if it's your first time playing through a larger mod, I think it's always best to experience it on its own and you also give yourself more options if you want to replay them. Now I'm only going to mention three mods here, but these are my top three mods and maybe we can do a part two in the future. So first up, let's talk about the Thorium mod. Now this has only recently been ported to Terraria 1.4, so it's a lot like it was in 1.3.5. That's not a bad thing, but it does mean that there's more stuff planned for the future. If you've never heard of it before, well, it adds in 10 new NPCs, 6 pre-hard mode bosses, 5 hard mode bosses, 2 brand new classes that are designed for multiplayer. One is the Bard class, one is the healer class. Now, I've only ever played the Bard class, but it's so much fun and very different to anything in vanilla right now. And it also adds back in and revamps the thrower class, which was removed in Terraria 1.4. With it being a smaller mod, it's also a little bit more approachable. That being said, though, it will add between 10 and 15 hours to a regular playthrough, but there are over 2,500 new items 
so there's loads of potential for repeat playthroughs. The bosses you'll encounter in this mod are pretty fun, nothing too challenging though, and the biomes that you'll find are really nice. Now let's talk about Terraria Overhaul. Now this one isn't a large content mod because of the amount of content that it adds, it's a large content mod because it's doing a lot. With this one, the gameplay kind of speaks for itself. It makes Terraria feel super fresh again by reimagining movement, the camera, the ambience, how combat feels and looks, plus it comes with a separate music pack which is worth having on its own. What's great is it's also compatible with almost every mod, so it can complement a larger mod but in my opinion it's best enjoyed on its own. Unlike other mods, this mod really focuses on feel, so if you've played a lot of Terraria, you are really going to enjoy this one. And finally, my absolute favourite Terraria mod, the Calamity mod. The Calamity mod adds in 5 new NPCs, 12 mini bosses, 5 pre-hard mode bosses, 9 hard mode bosses, and get this, 12 post Moonlord bosses. There's also 5 new biomes, the Rogue class, over 40 custom music tracks which come in a separate mod, thousands of new weapons and items, plus Revengeance mode and Death mode. So for the Calamity mod, you're probably looking at a solid 30 plus hours of content on top of a regular playthrough, and hundreds, maybe even thousands more on repeat playthroughs. The Calamity mod is by far Terraria's most successful mod, with over 2.6 million downloads and it's honestly for a really good reason. One of the best parts about this mod is that it gets updates like all the time and they're just doing some great stuff with it. I haven't played the most recent update but apparently it revamps a couple of bosses and a bunch of structures in the world. And because of that, the mod always feels fresh, and it's a mod that you'll want to keep coming back to. Simply put, if you have to play one Terraria mod, it's gotta be the Calamity mod. It's honestly that good. And that's it for today's video. I really hope you enjoy modded Terraria. Leave me a comment if you do check out one of these mods, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.